Hello, I'm Kristen Brzezowski, the executive editor of TV Kids, and today we're taking a behind the scenes look at Waffles and Mochi, a Netflix original series from Higher Ground Productions that features animation by Six Point Harness. We're speaking with Kadria Shamsuddin, producer of Waffles and Mochi, and Musai Brooker, creative director of Six Point. So I'd love to hear, how did Waffles and Mochi come about and how did Six Point and Higher Ground come to work on the series? Waffles and Mochi, it's been a long journey. Um, Erica Thormalin, who's one of the creators of the show, along with Jeremy Connor, was an early, was an early education uh, teacher. And she had this idea about 15 years ago to uh, make food less scary and do a, a kid's uh, cooking show. And so she ran it by her friend, Jeremy, who's known for drunk history. He's hilarious. And he was like, yes, we should do this show. Um, we should have puppets and comedy and it should be imbued with entertainment and be exciting for kids. Um, but the landscape was a little different 15 years ago for kids shows um, as far as like kids cooking food in the kitchen with knives shows. Um, and so it, it serendipitously landed in the lap of higher ground right at the moment where we're having conversations with Michelle Obama about what's really important as we move forward with um, television and in the kids television space. And something that was really uh, meaningful to her was her Let's Move campaign. And so this show, which sort of started as just this idea of how to make food less scary, how to get kids to engage with fresh ingredients, um, and how to make food sort of a part of the culture and the dialogue that we're having with kids on a daily basis, really married with Mrs. O Mrs. Obama's initiative, um, Let's Move. And so we went from there. Um, we knew that the world that we wanted to build was sort of hybrid in nature, with animation and live action and puppets and all of the things that we knew nothing about um, at all. Um, and Six Point Harness, they were, you know, they're an animation house. They're well known because they're doing really cool stuff. Like they had just finished, they had just done Guava Island, they were doing Hair Love. Um, and so we knew that they were a company that we wanted to explore. And after a few meetings, we were like, you guys are working with some in-house artists that are really creative and great. Um, and they were really down for an adventure. Um, it was a show, it's a show that's groundbreaking, right? Like it's never been done before. A lot of, a lot of the things that we had to figure out um, initially uh, were just like, what can you do in animation? And like, what can't you do in animation? And um, what can you do with storytelling? And how can you, you know, break boundaries for what the show could actually be. And so Six Point was sort of like, all right, we'll take this ride with you. We'll figure it out together. Um, and so that's how we came to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I um, I got a, a, a random email, I think. Uh, it seemed random to me, I think, from Priya and from Q um, and um, expressing interest in a new show um, with Higher Ground that I, I didn't know much about. And um, I came out for an interview and met them and met the co-creators of the show. And um, that was really fun and interesting. And sort of separately, um, uh, Six Point had interviewed me for a, a directing position on another project. That project fell through. And from what I understand, um, as uh, talks continued between the two companies, I happened to be on both lists. And so um, because of that, they, they, they brought me in and um, it, it was a, you know, I had so much fun on this project. It really was an adventure. I mean, I, I, I concur with that, you know, just um, exploring lots of different styles, lots of different types of animation and really finding a way to weave the animation in and throughout the entire show, you know, um, it, it plays such a, a, a large presence in the show and there's so many fun elements, um, great guest stars, great music, um, amazing puppets, they're so cute. Um, and then, uh, you know, we sprinkled a little bit of animation uh, throughout and you know, for me, it was it was just exciting to um, when I started on the project was sort of uh, came at the tail end of the, the writer's room and so um, started the journey with them there and then helped facilitate and bring in influences and 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 a creative conversation about how they wanted animation to be a part of this, you know, amazing show. Tell me about the hybrid style of the show. How did this unique look come about and why was it important to have animated elements? And then also what were some of the animation techniques that were used? 
Well, we knew that we were creating a world in which we wanted to be live action. We wanted there to be animation because when you're building this world of the layers of animation and live action, we wanted kids to be engaged with it, but we also wanted it to be a co-viewing show. It was important that parents would watch this show with their kids and be excited about it. Um, so the world is really bright. Um, we're coming from the land of frozen food. Um, and so in creating these worlds, we knew little about what the characters looked like. We knew little about uh, what the grocery store looked like. We knew little about what the garden was going to be, or even if and how animation would work and be interwoven, like Musse said, within this series. Development was a huge part of that. Everything was questioned and everything was sort of pushed to, um, to make the world as engaging to kids as possible, as bright and beautiful as possible, um, and as sort of mysteriously otherworldly as um, the land of frozen foods into our fresh world could be. Um, the look of the show really, there's so many consultants and creatives that collaborated on the show to develop this look and this style. Um, and the hybrid nature, I feel like was very organic. Um, we, Musse advised on so many elements beyond animation, um, how characters can play with each other, um, how different segments can be interwoven through the story. Um, and so uh, it was a true collaboration of creative brilliant minds um, that created this world. And um, yeah. It was really exciting to me. Um, you know, one of the things that I love about animation is the diversity of styles and how many different techniques and how many different looks. The history of animation is full of lots of different, you know, lots of different takes and styles of animation. And so, you know, one of the great things about the show is they wanted to explore all the different uh, types of food from around the world and different flavors and different cultures and different customs. And so it seemed like the perfect marriage of bringing in different animation styles and different techniques and different designs to match and flow in and out of the different cultures and different foods and different tastes that they were exploring throughout. And so, um, you know, it, it just really was exciting, you know, uh, Jeremy and um, Erica and Q and Priya and so many people had all these different references that they wanted to to, to pull from. Um, and then I also had some references, again, um, the higher ground folks and the creators aren't really animation people. And so, um, so part of my sort of responsibility that, uh, that I enjoyed, frankly, was sort of showing them different things, uh, showing different techniques, different styles, as well as taking a look at the things that they referenced and sort of merging it all together uh, it's sort of, it's not really a, um, it's not a smoothie as much as it is a mixed salad of techniques and styles and, and animation. And so we just pulled from a lot of different sources and a lot of different places and, and tried to find things that um, complemented each other and contrasted with each other. Um, different segments had different types of humor or different types of storytelling. Mm -hmm. And so we just pulled from a lot of different places to, uh, to concoct the the uh the garden salad of the show <laughs> walk me through the development process one of the challenges of the show really is that so much of the show is reliant on being out in the world and out in the field and so um i think in the writer's room um there were certain segments that they developed recurring segments recurring um characters that they wanted to explore obviously there's the through line of the main characters of waffles and mochi but then there are throw to segments um like the taste buds um or kids stories where kids are um similar to drunk history kids are telling stories centered around food and then we sort of recreate we animate those stories and so um you know there in the writer's room, they developed these sequences, developed these segments, then um, went out and filmed uh, all over the world. Um, <laughs> and Q could speak to more about that. I, I didn't join them on that journey, but um, went all over the world and, and, and um, filmed different segments. And sometimes what happens is what sort of is outlined in the writer's room isn't exactly, you know, when you're dealing with real people in the real world and asking them questions, they're not always gonna give you back, you know, um, what was maybe scripted in, in the original uh, show. And so 
from that, um, you know, we knew some of the recurring segments that didn't interact with um, people. So we were able to sort of jumpstart that part of the process and develop the characters, develop the look. Um, at Six Point, we have a lot of wonderful in-house artists. And so we um, just sort of dove in to the taste buds and different styles and different segments to try to, to find a look. We pitched some ideas to, to the folks at Higher Ground and the show creators. They gave us feedback and it really was a, an ongoing conversation. And then at the same time, um, after the footage that was filmed out in the real world came back, some story elements, some characters, some things needed to change. So um, it was really important for us to sort of remain nimble, knowing that, you know, there was a lot of improvisation that happened out in the field, even though things were, were really planned out and characters were established and the way that people would interact was um, outlined, things would come back and be different. And so that really was an organic creative process to um, flesh out the characters, um, flesh out the different styles and try to find segments that really worked, uh, worked together. I think that you're absolutely right. There were so many elements to this hybrid type show. There's documentary, there's scripted work that you do on stage. There's the animated elements. There are the guest stars. There are the segments that are, you know, produced outside of what we did in the world. Um, there are so many elements that had to come together. And I think that staying nimble is like the best description of the development process that, that you threw out there. We really had to be flexible. We had to be open. We had to be ready to um, for, for constant changes that were going to arise and things that you learn when you're creating a show like this. Um, you just learn along the way. Um, and I think that that was what was really cool with working with Muse is that he constantly um, was like a part of the process, a part of the conversation. I don't think there was ever a time where we weren't in communication, constantly asking Muse, you know, how do you do this? How can we make this work? And we're out in the field with, you know, a puppet that has in situ animation, if I'm saying that correctly, um, uh, Mochi's mouth. And so it's sort of like how, thinking about like where to position him when you're in a dock shoot in the middle of Peru um, to make sure that the animators are going to be able to animate. It's, it was constant and um, ongoing and so fun to sort of like learn how to make this show come together. Um, but development was was a true collaboration. And um, thank you, Musa. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank late you. night calls. <laughs> How? <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it, it is always, you know, it's always a challenge to develop ideas, wholly original ideas and things that were in the creator's heads and the producer's heads. And then, you know, the artists at Six Point and things that were in my head and sort of bringing those worlds together and combining those, I think is, you know, you can't really be in somebody else's head. And so that's part of why there needed to be this, this constant dialogue so that everything could, could fit together and work well with the show. And I think, you know, again, one of, one of the things that I really cherish, you know, I've, I've wanted to work in animation since I was five. So I, I, I have a history with the medium and, and have studied it really my whole life. And, and so it was great to, um, to explore it with the fresh eyes of the creators uh, and the folks at, at higher ground and really be able to talk about, you know, how certain things are animated, how uh, certain movement or certain design communicates certain things to, to the audience, um, how to, um, bring in um, uh, styles and design sense that is perennial, but also really up to date and modern and current. Um, and while still referencing a little bit of animation history. And so, um, you know, honestly, this was really kind of a dream project uh, just to work on a show that is meaningful and thoughtful and fun and, and caring, you know, food is, everything it's so important and it's so great that a show like this um, can help um, ensure that kids uh, have knowledge and enjoyment and fun with food and so exciting to be able to to explore in a medium uh, that I love so much to, to help do that. Was there input from Michelle Obama herself and how did it come that Michelle would appear in the series? I think that everything that happened on the show is very collaborative. And I think it's organic that 
her company did a show that she was 100% excited about. Um, and we constantly had this character that was sort of the guide, that was sort of the person who ushered uh, Waffles and Mochi into this new world and sort of was their uh, gardener in chief, was their, their person to, to watch over them and to, to make sure that the lessons that they learned and the engagement actually happened. And so it was, it was very natural that she, uh, you know, played this herself, but played um, this character as the store owner um, in Waffles and Mochi. Um, I think that there's always input. I think that she, how she works is very much wanting to learn from the creators, wanting to have the conversations. Um, she engaged throughout the entire process and um, yeah, and it was a great, it's a great experience. I always tell the story, if you've ever seen her engage with a kid, you know, she gets to their level, she communicates with them, you know, she's exciting to, to be around um, and to like learn from and also open as like a, as a colleague to, to hear your ideas. So it was great. Yeah. What are some of the core values that the series imparts for its viewers? Coming off of the Let's Move initiative and the exciting part of being on a show that's really about making food less scary, enjoying fresh ingredients, going into the garden and engaging with kids in the garden and saying, oh my goodness, I've never tried this before. I don't know if I want to, but maybe it's less scary at this point. Um, really, it's about engaging with kids, engaging with fresh ingredients and food, having the continued conversations with parents about food scarcity, um, continuing the conversation about around let's move and that initiative and partnering with um, organizations in the future that can help promote these ideas. Um, our, our, our core values are embedded in the work that Mrs. Obama had already done and really just carries on into the dining room, into families engaging in the kitchen around food. Luce, what can you tell us about the type of content that Six Point wants to bring to the marketplace? One of the things that, um, that we're really proud of and that we're known for at Six Point is the diversity of the styles that we have, which actually really played, a, you know, again, a, a big role in, in Waffles and Mochi. Um, and I think, you know, we, we're proud of that. And one of the things that we say is that we, um, we don't really have a house style. We sort of, we, we make a custom suit for every, uh, every client and collaborator that, that comes through, uh, through the studio. And so we're really uh, excited about that, excited to continue that. And, um, you know, the studio has been known as a service uh, studio that does uh, work for hire, but Increasingly, we're developing our own IP and developing our own projects and linking with um, other creators and creative collaborators to develop things. And so um, we're venturing again, obviously with Waffles and Mochi, but some other projects coming up into the, a little bit more into the kids space. Uh, we certainly are known for some of the um, sort of more adult oriented animation that the studio does and we'll continue to do that. Um, and you know, we're exploring uh, as there are so many different venues for animation now and so many different um, eyeballs, <laughs> especially with, um, you know, with the uh, pandemic, um, more and more um, places to watch animation, more and more places that need animation. And so we're, we're out there developing things, working on projects that come to us. And, um, but we're also, um, hoping to explore, we're primarily known as a 2D animation studio, but we're also um, beginning to explore the use of other styles of animation um, at the studio, a little bit of CG um, and a little bit of stop motion and different aspects um, of what the studio is doing, even though we are primarily a, a 2D animation uh, studio. So the, the future is exciting and bright and and um, yeah, we're, we're excited to continue uh, the work that we've done uh, and to explore um, uh, and create narratives um, for communities and cultures that are a bit underserved. And that's, that's something that's really important to us uh, and a very conscious choice of the studio. Um, uh, so, yeah. Hugh, same for higher ground, especially in the kids' space. What are the types of shows that you want to deliver? Shows like Waffles and Mochi. Um, that's, that's what we want to put out, shows that are sort of 
challenging what's already been made before that our co-viewing shows where parents and guardians and cousins and sisters can watch these shows with their with their you know kid counterparts um that that actually have a lesson but are also filled with with um, entertainment and fun and are joyful um, but also leave you with an understanding of food excitement and you know just being excited to be on the journey um i think that um this show really challenged um every everything that we wanted to do in the kids space um and uh has really sort of like brought in what is possible. Um, and so what well, shows like Waffles and Mochi is what we want to put out. <laughs> the series really is fantastic. And it's been so great getting to have a look at how everything came together. So thank you both so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. This was yeah, fun. Thanks. Thank you so much for having us. It's been it's great to uh, you know, really talk. It's been a while since I've actually seen Q, so it's really great to talk it's to her. It's been so long. I know. <laughs> and to talk to her and to talk to you again about a show that that really is wonderful. It's really something that so many people can watch, whether they're kids or adults. I've actually gotten a lot of feedback from friends that don't even have kids and they've watched it and they really enjoy it. And so that's really exciting. Um, but to, to know that um, it's something that speaks to kids, speaks to the family. It's thoughtful, it's fun, it's exciting. And, um, you know, I can't wait for season two. <laughs>